Here's a good one. Google's new AI assistant shows machines can now ask for information on their own. This is from Forbes by Khalif Litaru. One key limitation in building modern AI systems has been the lack of high quality domain specific training data. Given deep learning's voracious appetite for data, researchers have responded by getting creative from less data intensive training methods to harnessing massive armies of Amazon mechanical Turkers and teaching algorithms how to watch YouTube videos. Yet Google's announcement yesterday of its new generation of AI assistants that can engage in eerily lifelike conversations that border on Turing test material suggests that perhaps in the very near future, AI assistants can not only take on growing roles as research assistants and reference librarians, but even go as far as to begin collecting their own data. While limited in the conversational and task domains it can currently address, Google's new system is particularly notable for the way in which it can fluently interact with real world humans so naturally that they never suspect they are speaking with a non-human. As with generations of text-only chatbots, Google system demonstrates that within the confines of a specific task or domain, it is not that difficult to pass a Turing test. As a reminder of just how mismatched the human and machine domains can be, Google's announcement notes the importance of deliberately degrading the quality of the system's output through pauses and speech uh, disfluencies. Humans are imperfect processors, of information. We often think out loud and use vocal indicators to cover for periods when we are considering our response. A machine that responds instantly to every query with perfect grammar would appear too perfect and lead to an awkward interaction with its human respondent. Instead, by degrading the system to a more human level of speech and interaction, it appears far more natural. While the technology is a tour de force of conversational AI advances, perhaps most intriguingly was the idea buried towards the end of the announcement that Google's new system could autonomously call businesses to learn their hours of operation during special times of the year, like holidays, which are not always reflected on their websites. Google's suggestion was that their system could call businesses, ask what hours they are open, and then feed this information back into public Google search services, greatly reducing the volume of calls that business would otherwise receive from customers all looking for the same information. What time it closes tonight? Expanding this further, we could imagine that as this approach evolves and expands into more and more domains, yielding it neural templates for a wide variety of micro tasks, the system could gradually be deployed for more free form informational requests, expanding their role from simple voice operated web lookups to full fledged reference librarians. Eventually one could imagine such a system autonomously identifying limitations and its training data and proactively interacting with human experts it knows to have information relevant to those holes and conversing with them to fill in those mission components. In other words, instead of being limited to web searches to gain new knowledge and have to filter through reams of garbage, such a system could actually call relevant experts and official sources to ask targeted questions to rapidly and accurately fill in the missing gaps in its training data to build a more perfect resulting neural network. Alternatively, Imagine an AI system that monitors social media, press wires, and media reporting and identifies a breaking story. Today, that system at best can summarize what is already published about the story. It cannot perform its own research by calling witnesses and official sources to clarify unclear elements of the story or gather more information. Using Google's system, such a system could conduct what amounts to basic journalism actually telephoning individuals and organizations to gather more information and incorporating their details and viewpoints into the final article. 
It is also worth pointing out that Google's system may finally turn the tide on the automated phone response systems that have largely replaced human call center help desk. Interact with a, any major company or agency today, and you'll likely have to wade through a complex automated phone prompt system that, with the worst design systems, can take several minutes to navigate to where you need to be, only to be placed on hold for an hour until the next human is available. Imagine instead you could tell your Google Assistant to call the cable company to dispute a charge on your bill and it navigates through the menus and waits until it finally reaches a human and then interacts with the human to dispute the bill, either notifying you at the end of the call that the charge has been removed and all is well or, or patching you in only at the end of the conversation to tie up a few final complex details. Today, companies hold all the power when it comes to customer interactions, building complex automated phone systems that are poorly designed, barely understand many users, and create such an intolerable user experience that people are more willing to simply give up than spend an hour waiting through menus and waiting on hold. Suddenly, with Google's new assistant in hand, the power is restored to the people. A machine will now talk to that other machine and to the all too often unhelpful humans on the other end of the line and resolve the situation for you without you having to waste a moment of your time. As voice synthesis and language generation evolves, it will only be a matter of time before we have systems that can mimic your voice and speech and conversational patterns to act as a near perfect conversational replica to handle basic daily tasks on your behalf. Putting all this together, Google's latest foray into conversational AI demonstrate just how far the underlying technologies have come and previews a future in which machines will increasingly be able to depart the text-only domain in which they have been trapped for nearly three quarters of a century and finally begin to interact with humans in real-life settings, performing tasks we could only dream about a few years ago. Bye bye call centers. Bye bye call centers. Not immediately, but if this technology pans out, and I do think it will because there are other technologies out there that are very similar. A lot of phone tasks that uh, people hold, especially women, are going to get hit. The same way the manufacturing base got. Uh, kerplunked in um, the uh, early to mid 2000s that took men out. Okay, AI is coming for you. The uh, machine automation that took men out, now the conversational AI is what's going to start to erode what uh, has been a woman's domain for what well, good guy 10,000 years, which is talking to people. I can only warn you folks, I can only tell you that this is not the future, but this is right now. I've been telling you for two years that it's coming. It's no longer coming. It's on your doorstep. And it's just a matter of how fast they want to roll this out and how many people they want to displace. And that, my good people, you will have to talk to your nearest representative about putting their finger in the dike and holding back some of that water. Because the AIs will only get better. And the machines that actually are in those data centers that handle this, these AIs will only get better in rapid succession. A lot of the technology to make them better are already on the drawing board. Not on the drawing board, they're already in production. And there's billions of people writing this code. And there's AIs writing their own code and actually learning on their own. So if they're doing that and we're constantly feeding them data through uh, Facebook and YouTube and uh and, our, and, and phone systems, we're teaching these machines every day how to do what we do. And those human chickens will come home to roost sooner than later. Don't believe that is 15, 20 years up the road. Don't believe that. It's five. China says 2025. It's 2018. So you got from five to seven years to get your act together and figure out what you're going to do. And for the men... The stupid gender war is over. It's over. If this AI doesn't scare the shit out of women and women in call centers or women doing medical billing and all the other 
paperwork type positions that they have. I don't know what will, but it's more than Donald Trump. It's more than Ben Carson. It's more than welfare. It's more than Section 8 because now it's coming for the folks in the middle and it's working its way up the chain because a lot of your administration jobs are basically paper pushing with a degree. When the AI comes and takes that, what are you going to do? Because less of those jobs than the people at the bottom. And it's not just the people already with jobs. It's the women and men coming out of these colleges at an ever increasing rate with no place for them to go. The competition will get stiff. But that is a subject for another day. One more chip on the pile, one more log on the fire, more food for thought. Like Cerulean says, oh, it's happening, sweetheart. It's happening. Anyway, let me get off of here. This is BGS out and I will see you guys on the next one.